Hello, this is ZDs. Welcome back to another Mario Maker 2 video. Clearing more uncleared 2020 levels. Uh, in this episode, I have five levels. Uh, not chosen randomly, but these are levels from uh, a couple of good creators that I've found in the past uh, couple of videos. Uh, the first one is ZZZNV, uh, who makes some, um, well, difficult uh, Kaizo-ish levels. Uh, the first one is is certainly a Kaizo level. Uh, this this first trick is a uh, Mecha Koopa Surf. Uh, pretty difficult trick. It's very hard to land on the Mecha Koopa in the exact right fashion to get him to bounce if you if you Z jump off him. Uh, he can skip over the lava a little bit. Uh, most enemies die as soon as they hit the lava, but he does not. Uh, and he, he's pretty good on the indicators here, um, but the, the, you, you know, the problem is, you know, Kaizo, uh, means you have to think fast, so generally you have to do a couple of things. There I did a, a low bounce, um, I hit the, hit the Koopa the wrong way, I need to hit him to the left. This first, this first part wasn't super hard to figure out, the second part was much harder. Uh, there's a little bit of shell stuff and some setups that weren't <clears throat> super clear offhand. Uh, that took me a couple of, well, a few minutes anyway to figure out. Here I see that little gap of puff and I'm like, what the hell is that? That looks suspicious. Uh, and then I accidentally enter the pipe, re-enter the pipe, but fortunately you can get back in without dying. But I had gotten a checkpoint anyway, so even if I died. So yeah, this is a very uh, low Mecha Koopa Surf. I, I can't bounce up too high. Of course, you only have so much time before the Mecha Koopa sinks in and you hit the lava, so. So yeah, there. I don't even know what's going on over there. The, uh, spring just bounced off and knocked some stuff down. Uh, you gotta go fast because the spring comes down and sets up a mechanism. Uh, yeah, this part took me a long time to figure out. I wasn't... There are some indicators, but... It's not that they're not clear. It's that they... Like, I guess... Uh, yeah, I guess that's because they're not perfectly clear. But, you know, they could mean a lot of things. And there's a lot of, uh... Controlled jumps, which means you... They're not full jumps. They're... Half jumps, kind of. Uh... So, yeah, there's a spiny in this clown car. Here's, here's the final run of this section. So you have to grab that Mecha Koopa and kill the Spiny, you can grab the Clown Car, then you can get in the pipe. Uh, the final part of the level, uh, got the checkpoint, is a bouncing off Lemmy's Balls section. Uh, this is kind of fun, um, but the lava is coming up, so you have to be very quick. <laughs> I, you have to hit it right on the top or else you get knocked out, and if you miss it, you're, you're done. But like I said, check, checkpoint. I'm at a checkpoint, so I, I can die. I have time to die. Yeah, the third section is actually quite short, thankfully. Uh, the, the level the level had a lot of stuff going on in it, so I don't mind that this one this part isn't. Overly, overly elaborate. Actually, like the, the first two parts are fairly short too, but they took uh, the second part especially took me a long time to uh, figure out. Jump off the P switch. We can enter that door. I don't know why the, there's a coin below there, but there we go. Sound effects on the axe. That's fine. As long as the sound effects aren't distracting, that's that's cool. Yeah, good level, really good level. I think that's probably my favorite of the uh, four I beat by ZNV. Uh, the next ZNV level is a frog level, and I'm not a huge fan of the frog uh, suit. Um, it was cool in Super Mario Brothers 3, but like, I mean, it has. 
you don't use it that often. There's only a couple of levels in that game where you use it. And, and uh, Mario Maker, there's really not a lot of utility with the suit. Uh, you can either make a very annoying platforming level or a running on water level or a swimming level. Here, here he chooses annoying platform. Actually, it goes with pretty much all three frog genres. Um... Yeah, here's the annoy the annoying plat. This this jump here makes this level hard. Uh, honestly, after I finish this level, I'm gonna speed part of this up. I I I tried this forever before I finally got it, and then I messed it up again. So I just at that point I'm just like I don't know how long this level is, and this was right at the beginning anyway. So I'll just I'll just reset it. But yeah, you have to land on one platform and get to the other platform, and getting that momentum is. Very, very difficult. Uh, the frog, frog moves so awkwardly. Yeah, here I'm trying, gonna try over and over again in fast motion. Uh, but this is all the first life that I, but I cannot get to that second platform, man. I cannot get to it. And then you have to jump off the second platform and get over the. Uh, yeah, the, just the the way the frog moves is very awkward. Um, Yeah, so you have you have the awkward platforming frog here. So here's here I actually make it, but I don't make it over the top. So I'm like I'm gonna start over. I've had enough. I had enough. But we'll just cut there to the time that I actually figure it out. Um, but yeah, there's the the annoying platform platforming, uh, the underwater race, and then the uh, the over the water race. Because when you're holding an item and, and frog and you hit P speed, you can actually run over the water like you're some sort of uh, Frogs don't do that, but they're they're lizards that can do that in real life. Um, but it's a cool uh, it's a cool mechanic. Not something that existed in the actual game, but it's something they invented for Mario Maker. So I lost the frog suit at this point. I'm gonna just look ahead, and I completely missed my jump there. If I recall correctly, I can get I can win that without the frog suit at this point. But we'll see. Uh, this time I, I'm able to keep the frog suit. Over that jump, that jump is pretty hard too. The mo keeping the momentum as the frog is is the difficult part. Um, getting like run momentum, because because you have the awkward jump. So I missed that that. And here's the, here's this part. Um, honestly, I don't know what his purpose is here. Uh, I assume that this is some sort of I don't know exit. But you can enter a door on a P switch. But uh, between the water and the frog suit. The way the frog suit moves, it's actually very difficult to hit this jump. And I even try at times to do a P-switch jump to get back to where I need to be. Um, but I, I assume that this is going to help me in some way to get in this door. Otherwise, I don't know why he puts it in. I guess it's just a bonus. And yeah, you see, if I if I hit the if I touch the top of the P-switch and enter the door at the same time, it'll work. Um, but it has to be like almost perfect. Yeah, here I'm gonna try to, and I actually get a piece of jump, but I don't know if I can actually make it up there. It would have to be really, really good. And again, like the frog suit just makes everything awkward. So eventually I do get in the door, and I, I have no idea how long this. I remember this taking forever when I was editing. Uh, I, I'm at this point. I don't want to have to do that that awful jump at first. There's a couple of really awful jumps. First part of this level is way harder than the rest of it. <laughs> keep keep going, keep going. I'm gonna get it eventually. But yeah, that was too high. That one's too high. Almost. That was too low. I didn't actually touch the P switch, or else it would have activated. Almost too low. Yeah, the, with the piece which has to be right at the bottom of the door, and I can there. You, there we go. And it puts me in this area, and there's some 50s, there's a, some coins. But then this is the beginning of the level, so I have to do it all over again anyway. So I just reset it. I'm like, I'm not in unless it doesn't matter. Coins don't matter. This one's gonna be like I I don't take too many lives to actually beat this. Hey, so I missed this. Yeah, if I got over there, I could have. 
second one. I assume right now I'm, I'm aft because I don't have the frog suit, but here's a checkpoint and a frog suit, so that's good. Now the second part of the level is the underwater section. This was made a thousand times when when the frog suit was introduced. I, I needed to put that shelmet on. I put the shelmet on, I can actually bounce the muncher up. But I, had a, I have a checkpoint, so no problem. Yep, hit that with the shell. Bounce that guy up. Yeah, this is a this is a tough. And then there's a boss fight, which is actually a pretty cool boss fight. Uh, underwater frog fight. By the way, um, underwater uh, castle at no wait what what is it? Uh, the nighttime castle in Super Mario Brothers three. You get this awesome, uh, uh, looks like the last level of Super Mario Brother 3, um, castle, which is really cool. Very, very rare style to see, but you saw it a lot with the frog, because it was, it, it's a few times you get to use it, and you, if you want an underwater level. Anyway, uh, some coins, and then the third part of the level is a very short, but here's the running on water part. You grab P-Speed, you can run right over the water. Follow the indicators. There's not much here, though. This is the end. And I, th I think... Oh, am I going to have to do the P-Switch activate? I have to activate the P-Switch. No, I can just set it up there, thankfully. I uh, definitely don't want to lose that P-Switch at this point. Yeah, that's the level. Um, I give it a like. It's not bad, at, honestly. That The platforming section is very difficult and kind of a pain in the ass. So, I actually beat that pretty quick it might be an expert level um i didn't i didn't hold it long enough to see the percentage unfortunately one out of 36 whatever that is um that still should be super expert i think so we're on to denon's levels uh denon and i had levels from him last week i had a the mask level from last week um the the first two levels i, I have three levels from denon the first two levels uh, have uh, what, what's what, what's known as a sieve gaming mechanism, which um, <clears throat> if you're a Mario Maker player, you probably remember Sieve. Um, he's a video game. He's actually an engineer in real life, but he's he makes YouTube videos about video games, and uh, he made a lot of Mario Maker ones early on in this game's life. He probably made Mario Maker one. Uh, videos too, but he uh, was an infamous maker for creating uh, mechanisms. Uh, he's kind of, kind of a genius. Like I said, he's an engineer in real life. But um, one of the few randomization things that you can do is you put a clown car in spikes, and it'll either go to the left or right. So there's a 50/50 chance. So Steve came up with this cool concept where. The left side of the level would be a completely different level from the right side, and this uh, Denon made at least two levels I saw uh, where he did this, where every time I got to this clown car section, it chose a way for me, and uh, they eventually lead to the same spot. So I, I'm in the same place, but I go left this time. That's completely random. It's a 50/50 chance anyway. And here is a uh, uh, the night theme with the with the dry bones, uh, the dry bone fish. Uh, they fly in there. I think everything's underwater except you and the night theme. What is it? Uh, sky night sky theme. I don't know. I don't remember how it works. But yeah, I have to I have to trigger these fish and they come towards me, and I can bounce off of them, and it's low grab. So then I can get up to that pipe, but I have to—I had to get him at an angle where I can get up to that pipe. And then the night ice theme is, of course, uh, slippery. Um, I—I I really like how the the night themes look in Super Mario Brothers 3. I generally really like the night themes in general, although some, well, okay, the like the ghost house and the. Underwater themes suck because they're dark. The dark themes suck, but I, I really like using the night themes. 
the slippery ice is difficult, but it's it's generally pretty cool, and I love the uh, music on Super Mario Bros. 3. Uh, the the night themes always use a very um. I I I I'm not a music person, but I think it's a minor key of the same theme. Pretty cool though. Here you just have to not jump on these note blocks. The uh, low grav uh, night air theme makes you able to drift to the next one pretty easily. Here's another conquer section. I can't remember how many sections. There's like probably three randomization sections in each uh, level. I died there on accident. <laughs> we'll go back there. I didn't even see what was going on, but yeah, we'll go to the right here. There's uh, some skewer action. I don't know if I even saw everything on these levels. There might have might have been paths that I never got to go to. But yeah, these are very well designed levels. They're very cool looking, uh, and it's very unfortunate that, that uh, no one played them or beat them because the guy put a ton of effort into them. Uh, I like this one. This one is a Super Mario Brothers 3 one. The next one will be a Super Mario World one. I like this one a little better. Um, yeah, so that, that, I get to take the right pipe here. The left pipe would have probably been something completely different, but I don't think I even saw that. Yeah, these aren't super difficult either. I don't think I spend that many lives on either one. Um... But yeah, they're not like super hard levels, and uh, that mask level that I played last week was extremely difficult. Uh, and I finally, I played, I beat three of this guy's levels, uh, four of this guy's levels, and then I played a fifth one that was a pea balloon level, and it was a, a, a custom auto scroll level, and I really hated that one, and I actually ended up booing and leaving. Not a nasty comment, but kind of a just a, I don't like this this level after beating the other four levels. Um, so, on the, we do see both sides of this. The left side is a uh, Tanuki section, a uh, Raccoon Mario section, where if you're flying and you bounce off an enemy, you get to keep your P-Speed. I, I really like that mechanic. I've used it in levels before. Um, but it's it's uh, not easy, especially with the spikes. I guess you could call that a spike tunnel section. Uh, sometimes the Tanuki is hard to control. To the right, you have a and there's there's a little bit of a mess up here. I'm not sure why. I've had this problem in uh, when I make videos on Super Mario Brothers three levels. Anyway, I get the dry bowl, and uh, he actually lets me re-enter the door, so I have a Tanuki tail as well. But anyway, here you'll see it glitch out a little. I've had at least one level that I uh, recorded that, like the whole, I beat it and the whole level was like this. Anyway, you have the dry bowl and you can duck and you can turn into the bones. You go through the uh, thwomps, but I messed up, so I died. Here's a, this is also like a spike tunnel section, but if I had done that correct, that would have been easy. But I realize since he lets me re-enter the door for whatever reason, I'm shocked he lets me do that. I can get both of them. Uh, and then this section to the left, I don't have to worry about the uh, Tanuki flying. Uh, actually, if, if you re-enter the door with the uh, dry bowl, uh, the clown car could, could activate the left side of the level, or it could just drop a bomb on the right side, but you could just keep doing it until you get the left side open. And Yeah, if you have the dry bowl in this section, it's... Uh, it's very easy. Uh, you do have to ditch it right here, but that's that's not a problem because this is the end of the section. Yeah, like I said, this is a very clever level. Um, yeah, very indebted to the Sieve uh, level that he originally made like this, where it was uh, random paths. Yeah, that guy was brilliant. He still makes really good videos, but not on Mario Maker. He did not like Mario Maker 2 for whatever reason. I thought his reasons were very stupid, honestly. But, uh, 
always like the guy. He's a he's a really good video game content creator. Very funny. I think I can't remember where he's from. Denmark or Holland? I can't remember. He has a really cool accent, but he's a, he's a good guy. Uh, the next level, and it's, this is the one too. I think. Yeah, I just I just go right to it. I guess. A random mine in the mountain. Uh, I think the other one was called random something else, uh, too. But uh, uh, this one is I, I like it a little bit less than the previous one, but it's still pretty good. Um, there, I uh, almost die right away to the mole. Moles are deadly. I see that. I thought maybe he had a key, and he doesn't. And I'm like, well, oh, I can get up here to the left. The only thing, the, that, that part kind of sucks because um, every time you die before you get to the checkpoint, you have to do all this crap again, which kind of annoying, but not not too bad. It's not too hard. It's very, I think I do, I die to the small, I, I die to, moles are, moles are such a pain in the ass. Anyway, oh, no, this one, the reason I, I don't love this course is because he uses dry bones and Super Mario World dry bones are horrible because they throw that bone and it's not entirely randomized but it's randomized enough where it's it's difficult to deal with you'll be jumping at them you you go to jump on them and they pull out that bone and you land right on that bone and you're dead and it's so annoying especially if you're coming at them from a distance like I was right there, they could just whip it out, <laughs> whip out their bone and bone ya. Um, yeah. Really wish they didn't do that, but you know, I mean, I, I guess it's a cool difference, but it's people spam that thing way too often. So here's the, the first randomized element to the right. We go, it drops a, a cannon on the store, so I can go in there. The other side will do the same thing, but on the opposite side. Uh, this first section that we get to is a thwomp race, which I am not very good at those, but I, I didn't recognize what it was fast enough. I also think uh, this one's a little bit over-decorated, so sometimes it takes me a second to find where I am and what I'm doing. Uh, he, he does like the, uh, the semi-solid backgrounds here. The, second, the other section, as you see, is, is a, a bit easier, I think. Honestly, I don't really know how hard that thwomp section is because I only got to it once. But I die anyway. I, that was not a, it's not a hard section, but yeah, some bullets, some bonsais, and some uh, cannonballs. So here's the second section. We'll go to the left. Just some basic platforming. Is this one where I don't even see there? Yeah, I didn't even see what happens on the right of that one. I think, yeah, I think there are three. There might be four randomized sections. I don't remember. It's at least three. Here's the third one. Head to the right. And I think, are there more dry bones here? No, this is some cannonball jumping and I don't jump high enough for that, that time. So we go to the right again. It's like I said, it's completely 50-50, so I could go to the left. Yeah, I think Steve just realized that there's very there are some random elements in this game, but that's a way that you can 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 make like kind of a randomized level. Here I I jump a little too far, I fall in the pit. Uh I guess we must have hit right every time here, yeah, because I think I beat it from here. Go in the door. Here's a here's another randomized section. It's a completely different one. It's on the left. We go to the left this time. And here's some more dry bone jumping. And I'm I get I get really afraid to even jump. Yeah, see I bounce off the one dry bone and I go right into the second dry bone's bone. Back on the left. Oh, this is, this is, oh, no, this must be the section before. Yeah, this must be the randomizer before. 
Yeah, it's a little bit of climbing. This part's cool. I like this. Yeah, these two levels aren't aren't perfect, but I'm surprised no one could beat them. I guess they're a little long, but they're not super bad. I think both of them took me to 10 to 12 minutes, so I'm mean, e each 10 to 12 minutes each. Big big dry bones. I when you're bouncing off him, uh, he doesn't have time to pull out a, sh a bone, but he's he moves a little bit, so I was able to get him to the left, and that's the end. And yeah, see, I could come from the other direction or something. I can't remember. Uh, the last level by Denon is a. Don't know if he kind of kind of a speed run. Not really. There's no timer. Um, but it's a speed run esque level. Um, might be better with a timer. But it's one that if you mess up, you're gonna die anyway. I'm only gonna show the clear on this one. Uh, it is called Snow Who Mountain. I have no idea what that's all about. Uh, it is a snow level. Um, this one I like. It's it's a cool level, but it's um the indicators are a little weak, I think. Uh, and there's some really tough jumps. Uh, but his indicators are only only coins, and they they can mean various things. And sometimes he doesn't indicate. Right here, you got to be really fast. Jump up there. Got the star ran out the star. This is a really hard throw right here. Uh, don't jump there, which is a little weird. I mean, it's not weird, but there's no indication that you could just fall. And that's the level. Yeah, that one actually did take me longer than... It looks very easy when you just see it done, but it didn't. It took me a little while. Anyway, if you enjoyed the videos, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next week. Probably more randomized next week. <laughs>